The last few days uh, have been filled with talk about the possibility that uh, Governor Jeb Bush, former Governor Jeb Bush, and former Governor Mitt Romney might both run for the Republican uh, presidential nomination in 2016. What do you think? That, what do you think that would do to your party? Would that be a good thing, that kind of competition, or would that be a destructive thing if both of them do decide to get in? Well, I don't think it'll be destructive, but I'm not so sure it's going to happen. Both of them are talking like they might run. I think it's more likely that Bush will run than Romney will run. But if they both run, look, uh, it's going to be a large field anyway. It's going to be a very high quality field, particularly compared to 12, with a lot of governors and others who've got real records of accomplishment. But whether both of them run or not, it'll be a field where there's no true front runner. So uh, I, I think whatever happens between it, with, with Romney uh, or even Bush, for that matter, I think it should be a large, high-quality field. Governor, if Jeb Bush gets in and raises the kind of money his people are talking about, why wouldn't he be, as your party has always had, a true front-runner? Well, we didn't really have a true front-runner in 12. Uh, you, you can just see how hard it was for Romney to put away the nomination. And every candidate got to try on Cinderella's slipper at some point. I think almost every single candidate at one time or another led in the polls. Uh, but I don't think you can claim if, that there's going to be a front runner this time. When you look at this field, there are a bunch of people here that start off with real basis of support from which they can grow. Uh, Governor Barber, I'm curious what you think is motivating the, uh, the, 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 the calls on some people in the party for Mitt Romney to run. Um, as you know, he did not fare very well in 2008, and by many measures, he did not fare, fare very well in 2012. What is it that motive, among Republicans who want him to run, what are they thinking? Uh, I can't answer that, I, just because I'm not privy to those conversations. Well, what's, what would you say is the rationale for a Romney candidacy? I'm not privy to that either. <laughs> well, can you make one up? I know I've heard you talk about Jeb Bush and Chris Christie. I'm pretty confident you could right now say what their rationale would be. What would Mitt Romney's? Look, Mitt Romney would have made a great president. Uh, he would have been an enormous improvement over Barack Obama, and many, many Republicans thought he was going to win, and Go virtually every Governor, Republican all, thought with, he had a good Governor, chance. Governor, with to all win. due respect, though, what would the rationale be this time? Well, you got a very large field, and maybe somebody thinks that in such a large field, somebody who has run a couple of times before starts off with some innate advantage. I, I don't see that. But again, it's a decision for Mitt to make. Mitt's a friend of mine. He is a good man. He'd make a great president. But whether or not he should try for a third term is just something that they're going to have to ask somebody other than me about. Go Governor, as long as we're talking you don't seem about You don't seem wildly enthusiastic about it. Is that fair to say? Well, you know, when, you, when you've been around this business a long time like I have, it reminds you of some of the great truths you were taught in your life. And my old granddaddy used to say you don't learn much from the second kick of a mule. Uh, Governor, we've been talking about Mitt Romney, and since we have been, I, I want to play a little soundbite of him uh, talking about his economic message on Friday at the RNC meeting in San Diego. Take a listen. The only policies that will reach into the hearts of American people and pull people out of poverty and break the cycle of poverty are Republican principles, conservative principles. They include family formation and education and good jobs, and we're going to bring them to the American people and finally end the scourge of poverty in this great land. Go Governor, do you think that is a, a message that if Mitt Romney were to build a campaign around it, that that would be an appealing message in a Republican nomination contest? Well, it certainly has the advantage of being the truth that if we can go back to the principles of individual freedom and personal responsibility, strong families, lower taxes, less spending, rational regulation, peace through strength, the rule of law, right. uh, they, these are the kinds of things tied to what Governor Romney said. And I think those are the things that would that help our country get back the exceptionalism that the three of us grew up with but has been missing in the last six years, Governor, do you, do you think Governor, do you think that Governor Romney would be uh, the, the a, a suitable messenger uh, for someone who's running on a on a on a platform uh, focused on the question of ending poverty? Is that does he make a plausible messenger for that message? Well, I think if if you talk about the Republican candidate for 2016, whoever that is is going to be a candidate who talks to the American people about how we can have more economic growth in our country. 
This has been the weakest recovery from a recession, at least since World War II. Uh, the American people feel like the economy is finally getting better. But for most of the Obama administration, you couldn't tell the difference between a recession and recovery. And while it's been great for Main Street, it has not been good at all. I mean, great for Wall Street, has not been good at all for Main Street. If I'm a Republican or someone's a Republican and they want the most electable candidate, the candidate most likely to beat Hillary Clinton, how do they tell which one that is? Well, we have a long way to go before we start voting. And they're going to get a chance to look at these candidates, men and women. Uh, people from like Dr. Ben Carson, who hasn't ever been elected anything, to people that have served very, very well as governors, senators, whatever. Uh, and we'll get to hear them a lot, see them a lot, see how they develop. You know, I would submit to you as somebody uh, who was a Reaganite that, you know, in January of 1979, Ronald Reagan wasn't the candidate that he was in the fall of 1980. And that's going to be true about these candidates as well. But they almost all start off with real records of achievement. Look at John Kasich. Here's the guy that was chairman of the budget committee when we had the first balanced budget in a generation. The left attacked him and said it couldn't be done in seven years. It was done in three. We saw the House of Representatives pass a balanced budget amendment while he was chairman, and now he's been governor of Ohio, got reelected 64 to 33 in the quintessential swing state in America. And you is, can make similar arguments for others. I don't have a candidate. Governor, if, if Governor Kasich runs, is he your candidate? No, I don't have a candidate. And, 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 and won't for quite a long time. I want to watch them all develop, too. These are people that are friends of mine that I know well. The point I was going to make, uh, Mark, is Scott Walker, Chris Christie, Rick Perry, Bobby Jindal. You can go through this list. Mike Pence, Mike Huckabee. They've all got stories like John Kasich, different subject matter perhaps, different starting place perhaps. Jeb Bush, a tremendous conservative governor of Florida with a great record of achievement. So this field is going to give people something to vote for. Governor, you and I think that's very important. Governor, you're, you're great, in addition to a great Republican, you're a great political handicapper. Um, among all the people you've just named, uh, can you tell us who you think are the likeliest three Republican nominees in 2016? <laughs> you know, John, anybody that looks you in the eye and tells you they can do that will lie to you about other things. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't know. There are several people here that have real starting places. There is no true front runner. And I think we're going to see a lot happen before we really can tell who is likely to be in the top tier and who is likely not to be. Governor, your friend Chris Christie has a lot of strengths and some weaknesses as a potential presidential candidate or president. I want you to know he's got a history sometimes of, of uh, dealing with hecklers in a pretty aggressive way. I'd like you to fill in the blank on this sentence, if you would. If Chris Christie told blank, to, sit, to shut up and sit down, his chances of being president would be eliminated. <laughs> I can't fill in the blank because there are a lot of people that need to be told that. But <laughs> what I think about Chris Christie, people respect him for telling the truth, that he is a straight shooter. And, of course, some people who got accents like I do maybe think that Jersey Boy is a little something he has to be cautious about but the fact of the matter is when he comes down south when he goes out west when he goes to the midwest he is extremely well received people like Governor, him I, they think he's refreshing put, what if you put in that blank the pope would that be disqualifying <laughs> <laughs> don't ask an old presbyterian something like that